In this video I'm gonna be showing you how to create your own drum kits using Ableton Live's drum rack. We're gonna look at two different layouts for finger drumming. We'll look at applying effects to separate pads or to the whole drum rack and saving it with the effects. I'll be showing you how to layer drum hits in the drum rack and how to set up the micro controls for your most important parameters. So let's get right into the video. The drum hits that I'm gonna be using to show you how to use the drum rack are from the Backyard Jams expansion by Native Instruments. You can check it out from the link down in the description of the video. Super dope expansion and Honestly, to me, it's worth even just for the drums as they hit so right. And I have a pre Sonus Atom setup here to trigger the drums from the drum rack. I'll be making a more detailed video with the pre Sonus Atom really soon if you're interested in this controller. So I've loaded one of the stock drum racks from Ableton Live and all drum racks in Ableton are laid out in the same manner. This is basically very similar to the so-called general MIDI layout, which is more suited to playing with a keyboard than with a set of pads. So if you play this drum rack with your pads, you see that you have the kick on pad one and then you have the re pad two, snare pad three, Clap on the pad 4, another snare on pad 5, hi-hat, another hi-hat, and uh, open hi-hat. So if you want to play the kick and the snare with your left hand and your hi-hats with the right hand, you kind of need to cross. Or if you want to play the clap with the kick, Your clap is down here. So I think this layout is better played with the keyboard. Because then you have the, kick, the snare and your hi-hats are the three black keys here. So if you want your drum racks to be interchangeable with the stock ones, definitely stick to this layout. But I honestly prefer to use the machine layout. And I've started building this drum rack. Here I've loaded some of the sounds that I mentioned from the Backyard Jams expansion. On the machine, you have kick, snare, or clap, or rim shot, and then closed hi-hat and an open hi-hat. Although this is not really an open hi-hat, so let's, let's find that. So this is much better suited to playing with the pads, as again you have the kick in your and the snare in your left hand and the hi-hats in your right hand. Okay, I'm gonna load up some more sounds in this drum rack and we'll get on with building it. So basically I just loaded a bunch of percussion to fill the 16 pads. So now that we've loaded some sounds, let's get inside the drum rack by clicking this button here with the three lines. And this represents the chains, which are basically the actual pads of the drum rack. Each pad is its own chain with its own mixer controls, as you can see. And you can also access these up here. If you press this arrow, they are available in the actual mixer of Ableton Live, but we're gonna be checking them out down there. So I'm just gonna set up the levels. Turn down the hi-hats a bit. Turn down the shakers a bit. And I'm gonna do some panning. I'm gonna pan the hi-hats to the right at about 11. And with the shakers, I'm gonna pan them to the left by a similar amount. As you can see, hitting a pad highlights the corresponding chain in the chain view down there. So it's easy to identify which pad you're editing. Cool, so now we want to make the hi-hats interrupt each other as if we're closing and opening the hi-hat. So in order to do that, we click the IO button 
Okay, so now we've expanded the I.O. section and all the sounds that are added to the same chalk group interrupt each other and cannot be played at the same time. We're gonna add the hi-hats, select them both and add them both to chalk group one, which means that the closed hi-hat will interrupt the open one. Pretty easy. And by the way, I do have a more detailed tutorial about layering drums in Ableton's drum rack. I will link it down in the description of the video. But I'm just gonna quickly show you how to layer the tambourine on top of the snare. I'm just gonna drag the tambourine on top of the snare and hold the command button. Otherwise, they will swap places if I don't hold command. Let me undo that. But if I hold command, the tambourine is layered on top of the snare and it's created an instrument rack. I'm gonna rename it so that I know what I'm editing. And if we check out the layered snare, double click it and we will see that we have an instrument rack which contains two chains with the snare and with the tambourine. And as we can see now, we've expanded the device view of the drum rack. This is the button that toggles it. So we have access to the simplers that contain all our samples and we can edit them and change settings. Let's add some effects now. I'm gonna go to the return effects and I'm gonna add, for example, a reverb. I'm just gonna go to hybrid reverb, drag it here. I need to set it up to be 100% wet. And so now I can send each and every path to this effect and I press this S button here. So this basically shows us the send controls. So now I can send a small amount of reverb to the rim shot. Maybe send a bit to the clap. Triangle. And to this percussion hit. This sounds pretty good. By the way, if you find this video useful, I would highly appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already so you don't miss all the dope Ableton Live and Machine tutorials that are gonna be released in the near future. So these are return effects. Insert effects are much easier. You just drag and drop them onto the path you wanna use them on. So maybe I wanna use some flanger on the triangle. I'm just gonna pitch down the hi-hat. Let me now add master effects, which means the effects that the whole drum rack will go through. I'm gonna add the drum bus and I'm gonna add the redux. So now if I wanna save my drum rack like this, I can't really do that. It, only the drum rack will get saved. The redux and the drum bus, they will not be saved with the drum rack. So I need to group the drum rack with those two effects and create an instrument rack that will contain the drum rack. So you see why the drum rack can, and the instrument rack can get a bit complicated? Because remember, this one is a, the layered snare is an instrument rack that contains two chains and this is hosted inside of the drum rack. And now we will actually combine it with the Redux and the drum bus to create another instrument rack. So I select the three devices by holding Shift and clicking on the first one and the last one. Then I right click on this title area and choose group which is also command G on a Mac or control G on the PC. So this top button here opens up the macro controls. So now we can link some of the parameters to these macro controls. For example, the drum bus amount, I would suggest it to be macro one. For example, we can do the transient control of the drum bus to macro two, drive to macro three, and boom to macro 4 and i will also link my drum bus tutorial down in the description of the video if you're not really familiar with this device map the rate of the redux to macro 5 the dry wet of the redux to macro 6 and we can actually remove the unnecessary parameters by clicking the minus button here so let's leave it with these six so let's save the drum rack i'm gonna rename it fat drums 2 just drag and drop it press enter and we're done. So now it's saved in your user library and the files are also copied. The actual samples are also copied to your user library. Okay, let's make some patterns with this drum rack to see how it works.
So thanks for watching the video, guys. That was all for now. Bye.